All right, so I want to talk a little bit about creating like a pseudo code or how you might start to think about creating things in Grasshopper. Um, and so these are some standard icons for flowchart creating when you're making code. So you'll have like a start end that has a radius uh, rectangle and a parallelogram for data and a, and a rectangle 90 degree for process. And then for display, it's a triangle. You can use these. I don't. Um, it's kind of up to you. So you're going to have to make a decision, you know, if you want to be use sort of these standard ones. Um, I'm going to show you kind of what I use, um, which as a general generic outline, this is kind of what I use. I go and use the, um, this is made in Miro, but I just kind of have, and it does, the icons aren't that important, but like I have these steps. So I'll break my process down into steps. So what do I want to do? I want to create a column with two rows, right? Um, and so what's the first step? What's the second step? What's the third step? And, you know, I may skip steps in here and just put a note if I know what I'm doing or if I don't, you know, I might put a question mark like I don't know what happens here, but you kind of just begin to think it out. And then down below those steps is where I'll put the parameters and variables and the actual command strings and you'll see this sort of flow through. For sort of a simple setup like create a flexible grid of columns and eventually two rows of them, you know, first step is to create a column, second step is create the first row, and then I'll figure out how to get the, you know, I'm like, how do I get the multiple rows? Do I use a range or a series or an offset or a move, or how am I going to do that? So it might not be complete, but it kind of gets you to where you need to go. Um, if I go to the next one, like this is sort of instead of starting with the column, this starts with a curve. So this is a version. So, you know, create a curve. Would I do it with a line SDL? And then to create the second row, I might offset that. And then I'll divide the curves. And then I take those points and put the circle radius extrude on them. So it's going to look a little different for each kind of version. Um, here's another one where I start with points, right? And so, I create a grid of points. However, I do that. I'm not sure yet. Up oh, square grid. And then how do I call those points? Okay, well, maybe I use point and curve. And then, you know, do I get, or would I use cross product and range? And then how would I curve the, how would I call those points? So I'm kind of just laying possibilities out here. Um, and then I use point and curve. And then there's a listing process that goes in there. And then this kind of goes around, you know, you have to kind of go back from the rectangle to point and use that as point and curve and then you cull things. And so there are all these different, the more you know and the more you learn, the more you'll be able to sort of plug these things in. Now, if I go sort of back to the original sort of more simple one and I make this guy small, let's kind of bring him in as much as I can, right? And I take a look um, kind of at this series, let me move this over to here, and I look at this series, this is basically this guy. So here's the create a column right here uh, with the circle and the radius and the extrude. And then I create the first row, so I copy that column, right? And then it's saying how to get multiple copies. So if I come in, let's go ahead and turn this guy on so we can see it. I'm using a range to get those multiple copies, right? So range or series to get those multiple copies, right? And then I just take that and copy that first row. So even though this may be the definition, it looks a little different than this. And then if I come back over here and we go to the curve, right? The one with the curves, go ahead and shut this guy off. We can come over here and take a look, right? Let me turn it on so it's not all. Um, so this one is similar, right? So I'm creating the curve. So here's the line, right? Um, and then I'm. Let's go ahead and replace that guy there and that guy there. Um, so I'm creating these two lines. I'm offsetting one of them. So create curves, line DSL, offset. So there's all of that, right? And then, um, 
and then I'm dividing these curves, right, by this number, so there's the divide curve, and I get my points, and then I put the circles on those points, right? So it's a similar way of thinking, but you can just kind of go in and start to, you know, adjust it. So what I would do is sort of figure out how you can just sketch it on a piece of paper. Um, I'm actually using Miro, which is a um, free online service uh, thing that you can come in and, and sort of create. So I don't know if, if I like copy this guy down. These are interactive, so you if you pick them, you know, you can actually come in and adjust these guys and draw points, you know, around to different places. Um, and if you pick them, right, it'll have this little blue dot and you can just sort of start dragging things around wherever you want them to go. And it's pretty easy. Um, so, but there are lots of other programs out there that you can use as, as well. We're going to be using Miro a little bit later on for some things. So you might want to sort of get into it and, and try to use it. Um, but again, you could just sketch on paper as well. Okay.